I think the role of CPF uh, has has been one of creating enabling conditions for people to begin to reflect very very seriously on the tasks that lie ahead and, and realize some successes in the process. I mean CPF invested in, in the first phase uh, about six million over a five-year period. Um, that's not a lot of money when you consider the challenges but you have to recognize that um, this is a region where traditionally the donors are USAID, uh, European Union and, and, Africa and the banks, Africa Development, World Bank, GF and all these. And traditionally these institutions they tend to give big grants that take years to get, if at all. And, and, and very often when these grants become available, they become available to only those institutions or organizations that have the technical capacity in the first place to secure these grants and also to manage them. And, and, and this is, there's been a very uh, short supply of Africa institu African institutions uh, that can qualify for these uh, kinds of grants. So, uh, but at the same time, the problems and challenges that we face in the, in the conservation realm, as you put it, are such that it takes uh, small-scale, innovative, well-meaning, and committed individuals operating at very, very local levels to, to, to respond to the needs and, and effect some positive results. And very often the same individuals do not have what it takes to achieve the big grants. And I think that uh, what CEPF managed to do is reach those people and kind of um, uh, and, and, and trust them. Because again, it's also about trust. I think to give any amount of money, whether it's $500, in a country that's just come out of war where everybody's like fighting for survival to trust them enough to give them a thousand dollars five thousand dollars ten thousand is a big deal and there are many organizations that have got money before and not delivered results but the numbers are dwindling because people are realizing that one of the reasons why african-led institutions often don't qualify for these kinds of grants it's because of uh, certain unpopular activities uh, associated with these institutions. So there's an increasing demand for transparency, for accountability, and actually for doing genuine work. So yes, uh, CPF grant managed to reach out to hundreds of uh, individuals that work within small institutions that had a lot of good ideas but had not managed to secure the trust of the bigger institutions. So I think that that is perhaps the most significant contribution that CPF has made. Of course, the process leading to the creation of the fund is also very significant. You think about the, um, the assessment, uh, the, the, the regional profile that actually led to prioritizing certain areas for conservation. And then um, it, it was a process that was quite participatory and brought together people from all walks of life within um, uh, the region to learn about their region, to understand the challenges that it faced and to plan together for addressing these challenges. So I think that the process itself was very enlightening in many ways and once the grant started, people felt that this was one big opportunity. And I think the results have spoken for themselves. I was very pri privileged to, uh, as head of EFA, to to host the the the, the, the five year the assessment of the five years of investment, and, and and meet with a lot of the people that were responsible for these results. It's amazing how much that small, relatively small amount of money was able to achieve in a region that is so big with a lot of so many problems. Yeah.